Um, yeah, so we have some questions for you guys. Thank you guys so much for being a part of the inaugural FITEX. That was a, y'all, y'all hit it out the park, as they say in French. Um, <laughs> all right, so we have, we have a few questions. Now, ideally, the question should have been coming up on the screen, but the system not working out, so see, that's what we're seeing, so. So we, we won't do that for now, right? So we, we start off with Lawrence. The first question that came in was, who wrote Lawrence's bio? That was the first. That, that, so we, we start. that was not Lawrence. Um, where I work. <laughs> I know you look at it. Right. No, actually, that's just the, 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 the PR team um, where I work. They put that together for when I have to speak to the oh, media okay, or okay, for okay, ministers okay, or whatever. Okay, okay. All right, well, that's, that's... It was a bit much. I don't know if I could live up to that hype, but <laughs> we, so tried. Crazy mind we tried. We tried. Sorry, yeah, there's yeah. it's, it's a lot of hype, but I try to live up to that. So. All right, no problem. So yeah. just, just tell me, just flowing from your bio, what is a pragmatic innovator? <laughs> what, what, what do those words mean? Um, simply put, innovation for the sake of innovation is pointless. Um, what happens, and you see this with a lot of you know, people who claim to be uh, influencers, we put things out there for likes and, what was the expression, clout? But we don't actually pause and consider what the impact or the meaning of it will be. So if you're innovating, it must be because there's a particular uh, impact or meaning you want to achieve, and that impact should be governed and guided by God. Okay, okay. Well, that, that makes sense? Uh, that makes sense. All right. So this... Say that again? That's very pragmatic. <laughs> very pragmatic. All right. So there's a question for both of you. Um, so you could answer from, from your, your perspectives. How do, you, how do you find this purpose? So we start with Darren. How do you... Dis well, we kind of know... Yeah. Lizard. <laughs> <laughs> um, you find out... What are the things that you care about? You go through your history, you think about things that you have been doing for a long while that have been giving you fulfillment. And then I think you look to line that up with what are some of the things God say it should be doing. And you mix the two together and eventually your purpose will kind of pop out from there. It's not as clear cut all the time, obviously, because sometimes you're in something and it's going real good for a long period of time and it crash. And that doesn't necessarily mean that that's not your purpose. It just probably wasn't your purpose for that length of time. Um, I probably you meant to come out of something at some time. You know, but it's all about you continuing to leave yourself open to self-discovery, like personal self-discovery, and do ever like put the full stop on, on what you are yet, you know? That's nice, that's nice. I'm supposed to add to that? Um, <laughs> Take away if you want. I could, I could give you a story that aligns perfectly with it. Um, what I spent most of my time doing is leading organizations in terms of sales and business development. Um, mainly because it was lucrative and I got to be in the spotlight. Yay! Truth is though, I, am a, I used to be desperately shy. So like when I was in college, I couldn't even talk to a girl if I liked her. She would come to talk to me and I would be stammering her like, I, 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 right? Um, you're just, <laughs> just, like, dive. <laughs> just dive. Just dive. Just dive. Um, one of the changes or one of the main things that changed for me in 2019, I was living a pretty hard life in terms of, you know, 20 hour days. Um, I was managing about 14 different islands. So every other week I was on a plane and, um, I had a little near death experience. I think, um, when I ended up being hospitalized, the night when things got really bad, I was praying to Jesus, to Moses, Elijah, Elijah, everybody who I knew for sure was up there, right? And you know, you know when you're laying on your back, the only thing you could do is look up, right? And God asked me a very, very simple question. He's like, is this all I brought you here for? And I think I'd spent so much time. I was doing good for myself. Everybody was liking what I was doing. Wife happy, kids happy, money being made, whatever. But I, I didn't stop long enough to ask myself, this is really what he wants for me. Um, and in asking that, that's when things took a, a, a different turn. I started on covering um, more of my purpose and, and more of a need to interact with, um, with people and with young people more so. 
um the both of you lovely people don't know that you've just been volunteered to join me on um, one of the engagements i have a couple of weeks ago i was roped into yeah yeah i am volunteering you a couple of weeks ago i was i was asked to speak and no, i wouldn't be for free i ain't gonna do that i ain't gonna, I ain't gonna do that <laughs> Uh, but a couple of weeks ago, I was asked to speak at a, a function with some orphans, um, about 15 of them. Uh, it's a charity called Abide. I didn't know this, so call it a news bulletin. Apparently, once you turn 18 and you're in an orphanage, you basically age out. So if you don't have a job or a mechanism to support yourself, we essentially funneling people into sex trafficking or worse, right? Um, so that organization is actually developed a program to host the, they focus on young ladies, there's another one for young men, to host them for about four years, help them with their courses, get on their feet, give them a roof over their head, actually trying to get a building done. Um, and so they want people like us to meet with them, encourage them, coach them, mentor them, etc. And when I do things like that, and I get some of the organizations I've worked for, even the ministry, to put money into that, I'm like, that's what we're actually here for. What more matters than helping other people uncover their purpose. We might literally have the next Mark Zuckerberg or whoever in this room. We might, ne we might even have another, I don't know, um, Wintley Phipps, who knows? But if we don't share who we are and what we know with them, they might never come to the place to uncover and unpack that, right? So um, I think that is what is most topical and most important for all of us your purpose like i said it's in you but it's not for you it's also for those around you right all right, all right. Uh, I, I think you added to it i think you added to it all right so so this one to darren right um so people want to know after you left that job um how long did it take for you to well you did say you was comfortable with with nothing really but <laughs> but financially, how long did it take for things to stabilize? And did you ever have moments where you doubted and say, hey, excuse me, Mr. Job, um, I could come back, please? Um, to tell you honest, you know, and it might sound not realistic, but I left 2013. I used to teach at Bates Memorial English A and English B. Um, and I left at the end of 2013. And in 2014, I got married in that same year. Um, I think I just finished one year of, of paying for my vehicle. And like, I just, uh, I don't want to say it this way, but I didn't really care. I, I, like, I had no, I had absolutely no fears about, about what the future would have, would have been. Um, the, there was an organization at the time that existed called the Two Cents Movement. We had a, like a little six month plan. And, and I believe like, like if you're really, if you really pour into something in your talent in your gift, it, it will it will make a way it will make a way for you. Um, if you really you take that gift and you don't you don't sit down on it, you try to do it to the best of your ability, or you work hard on it, and you really trust the the result of that work, you shouldn't have anything to fear. Um, now this doesn't necessarily mean that somebody might have a gift and they're working hard at it and they're not prospering. It means that their gift not good. It's just as I say. A different journey for different people at, at different points and and you know that was just that was just where i was supposed to be at that particular point in time being in an eight to four job would not have allowed me to touch as many people or to interact with as many people as that i did over the period of time and as time passed i recognized that so sometimes as the time rolling on you realize yeah this is this is why i was sent here or this is why i'm doing this and you know um I guess the day when things get real hard, I start to starve and think, I'll say, yeah, boy, that is it for this. <laughs> this time for this has finished. And, and you move on, you move on comfortably knowing that yeah, you gave your best to this particular thing. All right, all right. So that, that well, that kind of, you kind of answered part of the questions that people were asking. What if having discovered said purpose, purpose acquired, you are following that purpose, but you feel like you are walking in the jungle with that purpose, right? So you're not walking in, in, in abundance and, and happy. You're not feeling happy and joyful, but you're fulfilling. You know you're fulfilling the purpose. How do you 
speak to someone like that or have you had that experience in your life and discuss? <laughs> you all are going to make me share things about myself and other people that anyway <laughs> um there's a there's a gentleman i've had the privilege to be mentored by called dr darius daniels and i had a very interesting conversation with him i think this was early last year before i decided to man up like him and write a book right um should be published in a couple of months that's a shameless plug sorry you had to do that <laughs> um and he i asked him a similar question i'm like well if i'm walking in purpose and i'm not seeing rewards for it or benefits for it what's the point he's like who told you you have to he said who's your mentor i said well G jesus he's like um what was the benefits and the abundance jesus saw for walking in his purpose being crucified remember all the disciples died none of them saw the fruits of their labor while they were alive but they were <laughs> the highest form of compensation is fulfillment the highest form of fulfillment is purpose they were satisfied because they walked out what they knew god called them to do they didn't see the reward in that moment for it but here we are how many thousands of years later how many billion christians on the earth why because of what one man and his 11 friends did. 10, technically. All right? Yeah, there's a reason I said 10, but that's another story. Um, so I, I think sometimes we, we feed ourselves this narrative that because you're doing the right thing, there's always going to be a particular outcome. I mean, just like relationships, God will tell you, clear as they marry that person and kill you dead. If you marry that person, listen. Is bliss, is, is honeymoon in Venice, is rose petals every day, is you name it. No, he's telling you marry that person because you will help perfect their character and vice versa. He might put you in a particular role. There's a job he put me into, one of the highest paying jobs I've ever had. And I went in there thinking, listen, by the time I finish with this organization, I will transform them into it. About two years later, yeah, it was time to go. Um, and I'm like, well, why did you send me here if it's for all this stress, son? He's like, I sent you there for you, not for them. You have grown, you have become more of who I made you to be, so on to the next. So I would encourage people, just be clear on what your calling is. Faith, by its very definition, is knowing something is impossible if God doesn't turn it around. So if you know the outcome might be negative or it mightn't be what you want faith is what says you know what i will still do this because i know that's what god wants me to do and don't get caught up in well it the outcome has to look like this because what what that means is you don't really have faith in god you have faith in an outcome and if you get a particular amount of followers or a particular amount of money you know well, yeah things nice mm -mm. it's not the way it works yeah um, no that 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 is a great answer um no, it is. It, it is. Um, that, that poem, Just Dive, right? That's part of a broader production called Borderlines. The poem after Just Dive was a poem called Boy Do Goody, right? In terms of just saying it, has some things that are not meant for you. It, it, no, it, was, it wasn't my poem, it was another poet. Um, it was a list of things, and boy do goody, boy do goody. So, Anytime I'm faced with that question, I'm asked, I always ask myself, all right, where's the line? Where's the line between a dream and reality? Um, where's the line between, yeah, I want to do poetry, but listen, you are absolutely no good at that right now. I give you two years, you're still not good. I'm going to give you one more year, and if you're still not good, leave it, and they continue. To, to know of it, like, like where is really the line, right? You, you want to be a, a soldier and you can't shoot, you know? <laughs> you will get killed, literally, man. So sometimes I ask myself that, and I try to be very realistic when I'm there with young people. For example, there's this young man that he's dead now, but before he died, I told him that. Listen, before he died, I told him, 
If you continue this road, I'll write the eulogy. All right? So said, so done. Um, so, so sometimes you had, a, you had a face the reality of seeing something going in a particular way. Um, and all of that's on the negative end. Some people really have amazing belief in themselves, and that is good. And you, you never want to shut down someone's belief in, in, in yourself because that is a hard thing to manifest. But sometimes I just catch myself asking, Should I, uh, is it my place to tell this person, you know, um, that time to try something else? Is it my place to tell somebody, that, Yeah, that, that Spanish, that is not for you? Try French. <laughs> You know, because there are some things that just don't fit people. It's like clothes in a store. Some, not everything in the store is going to fit you. So, so that's why it goes back to finding your purpose and really finding what fits first before you make that investment in it. And, and you end up losing on your investment in a detrimental way for some sometimes. You know, so it's, it's something that I'm still, I'm still figuring out. And I think it is a person by person basis probably. I don't know. That's, that's some stuff there. That's some stuff. Yeah, that's a... Yeah, I need a... Read ready, I need to sing our next song and let her soak a little bit, yes? Um, so there are two more questions. Two more questions. And you guys can give a, a quick answer, right? Um, is, now, these are two words we use a lot in the church. We use a calling and we use purpose. Um, are these synonymous terms are these different things what, what perspectives do you guys have on on those two calling purpose same thing different letters um discuss <laughs> <laughs> right, well calling starts with the letter c and <laughs> um i mean it depends on the purpose of the purpose of using the word calling um some people might say the calling has a more spiritual end to it, like, you know, God calling you. And, you know, a lot of people say that God is calling me to do this. And, you know, at the same time, you might have questions in here. I wonder if that really God calling you. Boy. <laughs> Somebody else calling you. Boy. Um, and, then, and then you might relate your purpose to what you want to achieve, like what you make on your vision board at the beginning of the year. Yeah, that's, uh, that's my purpose. Huh? So, so I don't know, but I think the two words could be used interchangeably. But if they're asking the question, how do you like differentiate between like your, your purpose or where, where you're good at and your so-called calling, then I guess that's a different conversation. That's a real, hard, another hard question. But these things in self-discovery is a process and, and you're going to meet some very challenging things. Um, and one of them is differentiating between your calling and your, and your purpose. Like, I, I could say that I was called to, to do this kind of creative work, you know, and I could also say that that was my purpose. I know, and I could come here on the next few text four years later and I'll tell you all, nah, I wasn't really called to do that, you know, it was just a period of me realizing that I was being built to do this thing that I'm doing in the next four years. So, who knows, you know? Sorry, guys, sorry. <laughs> I, I, I like his answers, you know, it's, man, it's real stuff. Um, I have a slightly different view, slightly. Um, I do think uh, we, we like to use calling more of, you know, like, well, Ellen White was called to found the church and, you know, it's like, that's the spiritual connotation outside of purpose, right? But I'll, I'll take it back to one of the things I said, where there's, there's a difference between your purpose, your role, and your expression. So like I shared, my mom, some of you all know my mom. She will live and die a teacher, right? Let me rephrase that. She will live and die educating. No, how she showed up, that's her purpose. She will show up as an educator in different roles over time, even being an author, a poet, a speaker. What we tend to do is we get caught up on the role and we think the role is actually purpose when the role is just how we enact that purpose for a particular time. Um, Rene is actually a minister. How that purpose manifests itself over time might be through poetry, might be through song, might even be through dance, might be through something she shares on Instagram, a little joke, or a laugh, who knows? But she's still a minister, right? So I think it's, it's good for us to get it clear in our, head what, in our head what the underlying purpose is, how that could manifest itself in rules, and then how we actually express ourselves. There are very few people I've seen doing poetry that are as good at expressing themselves as Darren is. 
but it's, it's who he is. It's just <laughs> you will see other people trying, and to his point, yeah, that that not, that not really for you. That not really for you, bro. Right. So um, I think once we clear on that, it it kind of helps us navigate some of those challenges. All right. So the final final question or final comment from you guys would be: How do you deal with the how do you deal with the noise that is coming from external when you are living or walking in that purpose? The external, the, the bad reviews on, on, on Facebook, I don't like this poem, he, he is talk too loud, or he thinks he's too pragmatic. Uh, <laughs> how, how, do we, how do you deal with those reviews? And well, in your experience, how have you continued? We'll, we'll settle it there. Yeah. Um... Sometimes you have to pick sense out of nonsense. Some people put across meaning, things that have a lot of meaning in it in very mean ways, right? And I mean, I'm not too much. If I wasn't a poet, I would not be on social media. Social media is a wicked place, huh? Like, I would tell, I said that wicked people, uh, person. <laughs> you know, but like if somebody makes a long post about you or somebody goes live about you or your organization, <laughs> Listen to it, listen to it, especially if it has a lot of likes and comments. Because I mean, whatever they said just resonated with a particular group of people that you probably were trying to reach. So if it's something negative, you might have to listen to it with a heavy heart, but you have to listen to it with a pen as well and you're writing down, hey, we probably need to do this better. I probably was really talking too loud in that poem. This particular line here, it really sung in a bit racist or it didn't mean that. Check that line and don't do it again, and you learn from it. I had a coach in CIC where I am. That, that man used to cuss, boy. And he used to curse me a lot, right? Like, he cursed in ways that he make up words. And I know it was a curse, even though it was a made-up word. Nah. But beyond the cursing, at that age, I started to realize, hey, he really telling me to get in that position for this next defensive possession or whatever, etc. And you start figuring it out and not saying to subject yourself to abuse, right? You don't have to go and engage in any back and forth with anybody online. And you don't have to deal with it while it's hot, right? You could come back to it after a while and just really listen to it with a, with a huh, kind of humbleness and really see if anything made sense in there that I could actually use to be better, to be better. Because, I mean, if God allow you to see it, then he probably allow you to see it for some reason, you know, and you might not want to accept it in the moment, but trust me, I've learned so much from, from noise. So, so much from noise. Darren, that was a sermon, you know. There's a lot there that I could unpack. I wouldn't in the interest of time, but yeah, there's a lot of golden nuggets there. Um, you have to remain humble. I think hum humility is one of the talents very few people either have or exercise. as the first thing. Because that is what would allow you to listen to the noise and, you know, say, all right, let me make some sense out of nonsense. Um, one of the other things is how... Pay attention to how you immediately respond to that noise. Because if certain things well up in you is telling you that you're probably like Moses, you need the people you're trying to lead. And if you need that uh, attention, aggrandizement from people, they could make you or break you. Your source is supposed to be God in all things. If you desperate for everybody to like you, again, to quote my seven-year-old, bruh, Everybody didn't like Jesus. Why you feel? <laughs> Everybody will like you. So there's probably a flaw in your character that needs repair and redress, which is why you respond in a particular way. So to Darren's point, sit humbly, look and see, all right, is there something I really should address, something I could improve on? And if certain things really get under my skin, why? Let me, let me do some reflection. Let me work with God and figure out why they pressing my buttons. Yeah? And outside of that, yeah, just social media. Woo. Yeah, but. I want to thank so much our two presenters, our two speakers for the inaugural FATEX, Sir Lawrence Modest, pragmatic innovator, and Mr. Darren Sandy, performance poet.